The Nightingale and the Rose, part 5. Now she has her breast against the thorn. The thorn is piercing into her breast and her lifeblood is flowing away. She sang first of the birth of love in the heart of a boy and a girl. And on the topmost spray of the rose tree, there blossomed a marvelous rose. Petal following petal as song followed song. Right? So in the topmost spray there, there is this beautiful tree. And then there is one petal, another petal, another petal. So the nightingale was literally building the rose out of music. The rose was out of music. Keep that in mind. Okay? Not out of blood. Out of music. As song followed song. Peyo was it at first. As the mist, mist is like the, 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 let's say, white air in the morning, you know? To simplify, fog is another way to say mist. Peyo by the way, there's a very nice horror movie called The Mist. It has nothing to do with our story, but it came to my mind. Pale was it at first, as the mist that hangs over the river. Pale as the feet of the morning, and silver as the wings of the dawn. As the shadow of a rose in a mirror of silver. I love this image, okay? So... The nightingale has already constructed the whole rose, but imagine you get a rose and you put in in, a, uh, in front of a silver, you know, a mirror, but made of silver. And uh, you will see, of course, everything you see here is silver, right? But uh, picture that, right? When you're reading anything, picture that. Make the mental picture in your mind. <clears throat> As the shadow of a rose in a water pool, so was the rose that blossomed on the topmost spray of the tree. But the tree cried to the nightingale to press closer against the thorn. Press closer, little nightingale, cried the tree, or the day will come before the rose is finished. So the nightingale pressed closer against the thorn, and louder and louder grew her song, for she sang of the birth of passion. In the soul of a man and a maid, a man and a girl, a man and a woman. In a delicate flush, you know like when you flush when you are embarrassed? In a delicate flush of pink came into the leaves of the rose. Like the flush in the face of a bridegroom. Bridegroom is a woman when she's getting married. When, she, when, when he... Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, groom is the guy, right? Bride is the, the, the woman. So... Uh, bridegroom is the bride of a groom, right? Like the flush in the face of a bridegroom when he kisses the lips of the bride. But the thorn had not yet, yet reached her heart, so the rose's heart remained white. So the petals were rose, right? Were pink, but the heart of the rose was white. For only a nightingale's heart's blood can Crimson, the heart of a red rose. Crimson is this very dark, uh, very, not dark, very deep and bright red. All right? Crimson. Like the color of blood. And the tree cried to the nightingale to press closer against the thorn. Press closer, little nightingale, cried the tree, or the day will come before the rose is finished. So the nightingale pressed closer against the thorn, and the thorn touched her heart in a fierce bang. Just a sec, guys. Let me see if I skipped it. I have the... Ah, no. I had the impression I had skipped one part. No. Uh, okay, so, so the nightingale pressed closer against the thorn, and the thorn touched her heart in, the f in a fierce bang. Pang of pain shot through her. Bitter, bitter was the pain. And wider 
and wider grew her sorry wilder and wilder grew her song for she sang of the love that is perfected by death of the love that dies not in the tomb tomb of course when you die right so love that keeps on forever and the marvelous rose became crimson so remember the rose was out of music the color of the rose was uh, out of the nightingale's blood so the rose and the and the marvelous rose became crimson very deep and bright red like the rose of the eastern sky crimson was the girdle of petals girdle is like the the, the thing that goes around right so the, the petals around and crimson as a ruby was the heart the center of the rose but the nightingale's voice grew fainter uh, meaning weaker and her little wings began to beat and a film came over her eyes fainter and fainter grew her song and she felt something choking her in the throat <laughs> right then she gave one last burst of music like one last explosion of music the white moon heard it and she forgot the dawn the dawn and lingered continued on in the sky the red rose heard it and it trembled all over with ecstasy and opened its petals to the cold morning air echo bore bore is the past of bear okay carry echo bore it to her purple caverns in the hill the the the, the outburst of uh, of music from the nightingale the last outburst of music from the nightingale echo bore it to her purple cavern in the hills and woke the sleeping shepherds from their dreams it floated through the reeds of the river and they carried its message to the sea look look cried the tree the rose is finished now but the nightingale made no answer for she was lying dead in the long grass with a thorn in her heart and at noon the student opened his window and looked looked out why what a wonderful piece of luck he cried here's a red rose i have never seen any rose like it in all my life it is so beautiful that i am sure it has a long latin name and he leaned down and plucked it okay pluck uh, by the way you use pluck for example if you pluck your eyebrows right so he plucked it then he put on his hat and he ran to the professor's house with the rose in his hand so we guess of course the professor is the girl's father right the daughter of the professor see was sitting in the doorway uh, winding blue silk on a reel and her little dog was laying at her feet uh, wind mm, wind let's imagine I get a, a, a rope and then I start doing like this you know I'm winding the, the rope by the way unwind is relax in English so imagine you are very tight just like a tight rope and then if you unwind you relax right so that's why we say uh, unwinding so the the daughter was winding blue silk uh, blue silk on a reel you know like a reel for a line so she was doing that and her little dog was lying at her feet you said that you would dance with me if I brought you a red rose cried the student here is the reddest rose in all the world you will wear it tonight next to your heart and as we dance together it will tell you how I love you the girl frowned this is what I'm doing here right the girl frowned I'm afraid it will not go with my dress it will not match my dress you know my dress and this red rose won't go well, go well together 
she answered. And besides, the Chamberlain, the Chamberlain's nephew, the Chamberlain is a, is an important position in a kingdom, right? Uh, he's a helper to the king. So, and besides, the Chamberlain's nephew has sent me some real jewels. And everybody knows that jewels cost far more than flowers. Well, upon my word, you are very ungrateful, said the student angrily. And he threw the rose into the street where it fell in the gutter. And a cartwheel went over it. Okay, so there was a cart pulled by horses and the wheel went over the rose. The rose was destroyed. So he threw it on the ground, the cartwheel went there. Ungrateful, said the girl. I tell you what, you are very rude. And after all, who are you? Only a student. Why, I don't believe you even got silver buckles to your shoes as the Chamberlain's nephew has. And she got up from her chair and went into her house. What a silly thing love is. She said, no, what a silly love, uh, sorry, what a silly thing love is, the student said as he walked away. It is not half as useful as logic, for it does not prove anything. And it is always telling one of things that are not going to happen. And making one believe things that are not true. In fact, in fact, sorry, it is quite unpractical. And, as in this age to be practical is everything, I shall go back to philosophy and study metaphysics. So, he returned to his room, pulled out a great dusty book, and began to read. The end.